His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paul. This is a UV5R. This is an FRS radio. This is a GMRS radio. All three of these are handheld radios, but one of them is not like the other. One will make you a criminal if you transmit on GMRS or FRS frequencies with it. Did you guess which one doesn't belong? Not this one. Not this one. This one. But a very common question that people ask all the time is, why? It's a handheld radio. Aren't they the same? No, they are not the same. This one is very different from the others. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain the difference between a UV5R and GMRS and FRS radios and why the UV5R may get you the death penalty if you use it improperly. As with all my videos, I will keep this video short and to the point because I know your time is valuable, especially if you're a licensed ham radio operator that came here only to point out every little insignificant detail that I may get wrong and leave comments to let everybody know how smart you are. But as a licensed ham operator, I know that your time is even more valuable. And to waste your time, to waste the time of someone with such stature in the community because after all, you are licensed, would be disrespectful. If someone were to purposefully waste your time right to your face, that would be very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. So what is it about this radio that makes it different? Why will you get a $250,000 fine or 10 years in prison? Some say even the death penalty. And by the way, nobody has ever, not once, been fined or imprisoned or received the death penalty for improperly using a UV5R. Those are all lies told by certain... Anyway... Those are all lies told by certain groups of people, like telling boogeyman stories that are not true. The next time you see a comment on YouTube or Facebook or online forums about somebody claiming that you'll go to jail or get fined and that it happens all the time for using a UV5R without a license or on GMRS or FRS frequencies, ask them to show you a link to the FCC database that shows that prosecution because by law, the FCC is required to make public all fines, all death penalties, all prison terms for all violations, including using a UV5R. So just ask them for a link to anyone that ever happened, ever. That'll shut them up because it's never happened. That said, it is against the FCC rules to use a UV5R on GMRS or FRS frequencies and in many other ways. And it is the rules, the laws, that separate us from the savages. So we do want to follow the rules. That's how we maintain a civil society. And that's why I want to explain the differences in these radios so that it makes sense, so that you can understand why it's against the rules to use a UV5R on GMRS or FRS frequencies. So, according to the FCC rules, and I don't know if they're rules or laws, I'm not a legal scholar like all the people that leave comments on YouTube pretend to be. The FCC makes rules, Congress makes laws, if I recall correctly, I'm, I'm not sure. Leave a comment below. Straighten us out if you're a legal scholar. According to the FCC rules, you cannot use a UV5R to transmit, you can listen to anything you want, but you cannot use a UV5R to transmit on GMRS or FRS frequencies, even if you have a ham license, even if you have a GMRS license, even if you only use FRS frequencies, even if you only use low power, even if you put it in narrow band only. According to the FCC rules, you may not use this radio to transmit on GMRS or FRS frequencies, period. Allow me to go off topic for just one moment 
Let's talk about licenses real quickly, because there seems to be a lot of stupidity and confusion out there regarding licenses. This is a GMRS radio. This is the KG905G, the unicorn of GMRS radios. If you've tried to buy one, you'll know why. To transmit on this radio, you must have a GMRS license. I've seen many online legal scholars leaving comments in YouTube videos mostly, but also on Facebook and online forums, that under FRS rules, you may use a GMRS radio to transmit on FRS frequencies as long as you're on low power. According to the FCC, that is not correct. I've also seen many licensed, self-proclaimed licensed, they're bragging about it, not me, saying that their ham radio allows them to transmit on any piece of hardware. Well, according to the FCC, you can't transmit on this piece of hardware with your ham license. Your ham license is no good here. You must have a GMRS license to transmit on a GMRS radio, period. Now for an FRS radio, you need no license to transmit on any channels that this radio can transmit on. Even if you're transmitting on GMRS channels, which FRS shares with the GMRS radios, no license required, period. But why? Why is there a difference between the FRS, the GMRS, and our beloved UV5R? The difference is in the hardware. Both of these radios, both of these pieces of hardware have part 95E approval from the FCC that says thou shalt be able to transmit on FRS or GMRS frequencies using this or this hardware. So some of the reasons that the FCC will approve one of these two radios for FRS or GMRS are because, I'm looking at my notes here, the FRS radio can transmit at a maximum of two watts on any channel. Some channels are limited to only half a watt. The GMRS radio is limited to half a watt on some of the channels, but on other channels is allowed to transmit at up to 50 watts. The FRS radio is narrow band only, no matter what. The GMRS radio is allowed to use wide band and will use wide band on most GMRS channels. The antenna on the FRS radio is fixed. It is permanent. You cannot change or replace that antenna. On a GMRS radio, although not required, it is permitted to have a removable antenna and you can connect any larger antenna to it that you want. There are no antenna limitations. The GMRS radio, some GMRS radios are repeater capable. The FRS radio, no FRS radios are repeater capable. Neither of these radios are field programmable. That means that even if it has a, a keypad, which many do not like these, you can't change the programming to transmit on other frequencies and change, the, you won't be able to change the bandwidth on certain channels. So both of these radios have a lot of rules and things you can and cannot do baked right in. The guts of the radios will not allow you to break any of the FCC rules. That's one of the major reasons why the FCC has an approved these radios for either FRS or GMRS use. So now let's look at the UV5R. A lot of people just say, well, why can't I just put it in at low power and narrow band or whatever and use it on GMRS or FRS. Well, you could, but you would be violating the law or the rules. And according to what many people have posted online, licensed people, you may get the death penalty if you do that. And the reason, some of the reasons are, number one, it's field programmable. It allows you to do whatever you want. You can program any frequency, any power level, any bandwidth on any frequency. You can do whatever you want. There are no rules baked in on this radio. There's no power limits, there's no bandwidth limits. You can do whatever you want. Because of that, the FCC has not granted Part 95E type approval or type acceptance. The FCC has not said, thou may use the UV5R on GMRS or, FR or FRS frequencies. Now there's a few other reasons why, as you've probably seen online, there are complaints that the UV5R suffers from spurious RF emissions and to be approved as a GMRS or FRS radio, you have to have limits on your spurious nocturnal, uh, spurious RF emissions. And that would be another reason why it's not type accepted for GMRS or, or FRS usage. So that's it. The TLDR is 
because the FCC says so. Now I'm sure there's much more confusion on this, so if I missed something or didn't go over one of those confusing reasons or things that doesn't make sense on why you can't use this but you can use one of these other radios, if I miss something or you're still unclear, leave a comment below. Dickhead comments, know-it-all comments, answering questions that nobody asked, explaining radio theory and radio history and other stupid things that nobody cares about, all those comments will be pinned to the top for everybody to make fun of and laugh at you. But there are no such things as stupid questions. There are. If you have a question, leave it below. I will do my best to answer. If I'm not able to answer it, somebody else will come along and answer it, and they will probably get it wrong. This is one of the reasons why you should never trust anything that anybody ever posts in YouTube comments, because most of them are morons. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you on the...